So you're a parent and you have children somewhere between the ages of, let's say, 12 and 30. I'm going to show you why your children look at you differently throughout their age. This is a Excel chart that I've been thinking about for a number of years to put together showing your IQ as perceived by your children. Now, because I'm going to make this kind of generic, when I say he, I don't necessarily mean he. It could be, it could be your daughter, but in this case, when I say he, just think about it. If it applies to your daughter, that's fine. So, remember when your child was six, seven years of age, and he came home from school, and he said, Mommy, look at me. I've got this beautiful piece of art. And Dad looked at it, and Dad liked it, and he said, Margaret, put this puppy on the refrigerator. So away she went, she put it on the refrigerator. Now I'm going to start graphing. Remember what I'm talking about. This is your IQ as perceived by your child. It's not your IQ, but this is what he looks at you, and this is what he sees. So you're up here at this point at 130, thereabouts. Until he gets to be about 9, 10, and right in there, he's still coming home with a little, little bit of artwork, you know, and you're saying, oh, Margaret, that's beautiful. Put that baby on the refrigerator. And he says, oh, Mommy, look, Daddy, look, I just drew a car for us. And by the way, I did another one. Oh, Margaret, isn't that wonderful? Be sure and put this baby on the refrigerator. Son, we're so proud of you. You're doing such a great job. Oh, and here's another one, too. Put that on the refrigerator. Well, at this point, now he's about 12. And your IQ is starting to go down just a little bit because he's being influenced by his friends or school or whatever. But he's looking at you a little bit differently. So you're not quite as smart as you used to be. Well, now here's where the problem comes in. You get to be, or rather your child gets to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 or 14. And at that point, he comes home from school and you say, well, how was school today, son? He well, it was okay. You know, what'd you do? Well, I had, uh, you know, I, I did a little bit of stuff. And uh, man, I don't know, dad, mom, I don't know. I just did some stuff, you know. Well, at least you got a conversation. You got some words coming out of it. Right? Well, now he's turning to be 14 or 15, and this is where the trouble comes in. So now at 15, he comes home and you say, hey, son, how was school today? And he says, fine. And we say, what do you mean, fine? What did you do? What was the best part of your day? You know, that's always a good question to ask your kids. What was the best part of your day? And he says, uh, lunch. And you say, lunch? And he says, yeah, lunch. And, and the food was terrible, but that was the best part of my day. So that's the kind of answers you get, one word answers, if you get an answer at all. Well, now guess what? Now by the time he's turned to be 17 or thereabouts, you are in a crapper. I mean, you are so dumb. Let me tell you how dumb you are. The kid comes home and he says, and, you, and, he, and he asks you, you ask him, how was your day today? And again, you're lucky if you get any kind of an answer. Dad, why are you even asking me that? It's such a dumb question. In fact, Dad, this is what I think of you. That's what your kid thinks of you at that age. You are a dunce. And you don't even know how to spell it. So you're the dunce now. And you stay that way for a while. So at this point, he's 17. And you're about as smart as an eggplant. Now, by the way, he tells you, Dad, Mom, make sure you wear loafers because you're not smart enough to tie shoelaces. That's the way he perceives you at that point. Now that he's going to be 19 or 20, and as you start getting some of your IQ back, now that's pretty cool. So you're getting a little bit smarter. And you know, he can't see the accomplishments that you've made. He can't see anything that you've done throughout your life. And that goes for the, for the, the mother as well. And now that you've gone to, to be, say, 25, he's off to school. Remember we talked about him, he's going to college, and by this time he's probably maybe even out of college, and he's got a job, he's got a couple of kids now. And he's going to start going through a similar process, but at this point he's coming to you for advice and how you're doing, and Dad, you know, I want to tell you, I think you're a really pretty smart guy. So you're getting your IQ back and you're up over 80, and now that he's moved up the ladder and he's now 35, he's got a few kids and uh, maybe he's putting them in school at this point. And now he's calling you for more advice.
and you're getting smarter again. Now he's looking back and he's saying, you know, when I thought my dad was really a dunce, he's a pretty cool guy, he's pretty smart. So all of a sudden you got it back. Well, by the time he's 40, you're not smart, you're a genius. He looks back at you when you were, when he was six, seven, eight years of age and you were putting his art on a refrigerator and he says, wow, my dad is a genius. Well, here's the part that I like. I'm going to show you the chart that we made up here that we put on Excel. And that's basically what I've repeated here on the, on the whiteboard. But this gives you a good, clear picture of what it really looks like and what your IQ is throughout his life and yours. And then after that, this is part that's really pretty cool. He now is going through the same thing. Because now he has children. So right in, right in this area where he started to have children, and this is great, his child now looks at him the same way that he looked at you. So he's up here and it goes right back down and goes right back up and that's when as a grandparent you can smile and say I love it because history does repeat itself. <laughs>